Jerry Jones lied to Dallas Cowboy fans, Luke G. Before this offseason started, he told Cowboy fans that we were going to be all in this year. And what were their moves to be all in? They signed, you know, a player on defense who you're pretty familiar with and Eric Kendricks, and that was about it. And the reason why they couldn't be as all in as what Jerry Jones claimed is because they didn't have enough money because they got to pay Dak Prescott. You know, he has an extension coming up. You got to give C.D. Lamb, Michael Parsons, long-term deals. And the Cowboys lost a lot of depth in free agency. Dan Quinn pretty much turned the Washington Commanders into the Washington Cowboys. Although they weren't great starters, they were great depth pieces. And the Cowboys suffered through a lot of injuries last year. And they were not good against good teams. Anytime they played a good team, they lost. The only team with the winning record that they beat last year was the Seattle Seahawks. That was about it. So when I look at the Dallas Cowboys, I see a team that has a really strong chance of not making it to the playoffs, Luke G. And I wouldn't be surprised if we end up seeing these boys in the Shadur Sanders sweepstakes. Because think about it. And, and I know it sounds a little bit outlandish, but I want you to stick with me on this. Dak Prescott's going to be commanding $60 million a year when he comes to the table on a new deal. If you're Jerry Jones, I'm not about to dish out $60 million to a guy who only plays good in the regular season and then looks like a jabroni in the postseason when it actually matters. If you're playing for the Dallas Cowboys, it doesn't matter what you're doing in the regular season because you're defined by what you do in the postseason. So I'm not about to dish out that kind of money to Dak. Why not get an opportunity to reset with the rookie QB, and Jerry Jones is all about pop, is all about the pop. He's all about the flash. He's all about making headlines. What bigger storyline would there be next year by you drafting the son of Deion Sanders, a Cowboy great, somebody who is expected to be the number one pick in next year's draft? I think he's the number one quarterback in college football right now just based off how well he's able to decipher and read defenses. So I think this year for Dallas, they missed the playoffs. They reset completely. They clean house with McCarthy. They part ways with Dak Prescott. And Deion Sanders and them already said they got no problem of pulling a power move to go to the team that they want to go to. So if they want to go to the Dallas Cowboys, I'm pretty sure Jerry Jones and Deion can arrange for that to happen. What's your thoughts on the Dallas Cowboys going into this year? Because I don't see them being a playoff team and – I think it probably would be better if they just go ahead and just tank for Shadur Sanders. Well, first of all, I think tanking for Shadur Sanders is is ludicrous. I he ain't gonna be he ain't gonna be what people think he is. I, I'm sorry, it's, it's 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 too many inconsistencies and, and and stuff with his game that I've noticed. And as much as I like what they got going on, the father son and everything like that, he he go him going first of all would be a huge mistake. That's one two. Um, the Dallas Cowboys always have been regular season warriors. In fact, I, I got friends who are Dallas Cowboys fans, and I tell them all the time, y'all really should be Lions fans. We're the same people. Y'all have moments where you're great in the regular season. Come postseason, you out of there, which is really funny because guess what? The Detroit Lions have been to more NFC championship games than the Dallas Cowboys has in the last, like, 20-some years, right? So that's that right there in of itself is a, is a scary stat to think of. But the Dallas Cowboys issues is bigger than this. And, and I'm gonna break it down like this. You like cars? I love cars. You, you got you got a good. You love cars? Okay. Uh, you go into the one. shop and the guy. T- I'm just t- I'm just telling you, you, you your, your car coming. You gonna get you a nice car too. Trust me. I've seen I've seen your growth. Your car coming. You gonna have a nice car. You gonna be in your car uh, doing videos. You know what I'm saying? Letting it happen. So it's coming. But make no mistake, when that time come, hit the brother so I can tell you some of the tricks of the trade um, so you don't get robbed at the dealership. That's another story. Um, when, when looking at the Dallas Cowboys and, and referring to a car, the Dallas Cowboys is doing the following. Uh, they went to the shop, and they was like, hey, you just need an oil change. And the owner insists, no, nah, change the head gaskets. And No, no, no. We, we just want to do an oil change. Yeah, I know you do but the timing belt ain't quite right. But all I need to do for you is an oil change. Listen, drop the gas tank because I'm thinking that it might be an issue. The gas tank, the head gaskets, and the timing belt. And they're sitting there going, okay, if you want to do these things, cool, and we're going to bill you for it. Now, why does that have to do with the Dallas Cowboys? 
no matter how much they change, there's the guy that's still going to be there who is trying to create more of a legacy than he already needs to do. You already a Hall of Fame owner, and you are the problem. You're getting in the way. Y'all just simply need an oil change. How in the hell are you still playing general manager and just missing on picks? You just miss it. Even this year's draft, you took uh, Cooper BB. Good pick. But then you go out and you draft this guy from Western Michigan, and he's very inconsistent. Ken, uh, Neelaw, right? You you know you look at you look at what y'all what you're doing, and I'm trying to figure out why you're doing these things. Why? Thank God you want to trade with us. Although I think they won that trade, but that's not, that's not the point. But you're still making poor decisions. You're doing things that is not allowing for you to have success. You can't even get a real coach in there because they don't want to deal with your attitude. And how many good coaches could you have had from, from Sean Payton to Jim Harbaugh? Nobody wants to deal with you. Because you got a narcissistic attitude. Your fan bases are narcissists. They do things that they just, they so entitled. They so entitled. Oh my God, we're, we're the Dallas Cowboy. You ain't won nothing. Ain't won nothing, Luigi. I was glad they got their ass they slapped by the 49ers. Won. So happy. Shut we, up. We, we, we won three Super Bowls back in the 90s. You, do you know what I did back in the, do you know, do you, listen, watch this. I'm sure I got the last time they won a Super Bowl, you know what the most popular toy was? <laughs> what, Luke? A super soaker, a super <laughs> soaker, two hundred. Look it up. The last time they won a, the, a super soaker, two hundred. <laughs> the they got the super soaker five hundred. Nobody was talking about the Dallas Cowboys. Hey, the last time the Cowboys, hey, the last time they won a Super Bowl, Luke G, you gotta watch that thing on VHS. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, like, like, bro, just look it up. You, you're talking about a team who hasn't done nothing, and it's because your owner refuses to get out of everybody's way. I believe if he passed the team on to his son, his son will hire a GM. You couldn't even get Troy Aikman, Troy, uh, Troy Aikman to come back and be the GM because he said he don't really want to deal with Jerry. That's Jerry's show. He's not going to just be there for uh, photo ops. Yeah. You can't even get one of your own – Legends to be a general manager there. Yeah, man. Shoot. I'm because you want to you want to run the show. Shoot, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Dion would be down the coach's son, but it's like, man, even he probably wouldn't even want to do that if you had to work with Jerry. It's like people but love Jerry. This. They just don't like working with him closely. Exactly. 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 And guess what? Don't be surprised if that try to be the next move. If they move on from McCarthy, they're gonna be like, "Hey, we want Dion." Yeah, bro. But you still not gonna get you. You're not gonna get much out of Dion from there. You know why? Because Dion gonna tell you, "I'm listen. I'm going shopping for the groceries. I'm making the meal. I get the groceries." And Jerry gonna tell him, "No, nah, mm -hmm. I get the groceries. Say, you make the meal." And Dion gonna say, "Nah, I, I'm getting the groceries and I'm gonna make the meal too." <laughs> Exactly. And so now you have you have this this moment where you can see that the biggest problem. So no matter what they do, they could tank. They it could be Peyton Manny all over again. It could be Andrew Luck all over again. Who it could be Patrick Mahomes at number one. They can it doesn't matter. Who you gotta have somebody to coach him. Kobe Bryant, for all the years that he was doing outrageous things, he had very good coaching every single time. Go and look it up. And when he didn't have good coaching, guess what happened? Team ain't do they did not look good. Mm -hmm. Didn't do, do a damn thing. Everyone, even he all... said, uh, "Go ahead." Uh, you you can finish. You can finish. No, I'm saying, but even he said that he wanted to go and get somebody who can push him above and beyond, and that's why he wanted Phil Jackson. Mm -hmm. He wanted the person who can get it done and push him above and beyond. See, not everybody can garner that respect. There are certain people that can walk in rooms and say certain things, and everybody can't do that. You see what I'm saying? And so as long as Jerry Jones is there, Dallas Cowboys get comfortable. Dallas Cowboys fans get real comfortable. Sitting because Jerry is y'all problem. 
Yeah, yeah Jerry is y'all problem. When y'all was winning playoff games, they was questionable. Ain't it funny how every time a controversial play call is against the Lions, I'm the, I'm leaving it alone though. You know, we we for the first time in NFL history, we picking up flags against the Lions. Oh, Jerry, Jerry, yeah, he didn't report. Oh, he did. They making them calls. They, yeah. they putting that call in, Louis G. Listen, I'm just saying the the, the no pass in the fence call. Oh, oh, what about? Oh, the two point conversion because he didn't report. Everybody can see that he reported, but no. Hey, Lou G, I, I find it very ironic that that all transpired on Jimmy Johnson night, though. All on Jimmy Johnson night. We can't we can't have Jimmy Johnson night game, man. I'm just gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna leave it alone. Uh, I'm, but what I'm, I'm trying to explain to people this. Too, Lou G. No, I understand exactly where you're coming from. Yeah, yeah, I understand. But the, 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 the Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys, no matter what they do, until they owner get out of his own way, you're going to still be who you are. So keep rooting for him. <laughs> keep rocking with him. But guess what? You you let when you let Ezekiel Elliott go for Tony Pollard, you then let Tony Pollard go and brought Ezekiel Elliott back. Right back. It ain't gonna change. <laughs> it ain't gonna change your running back room. Oh, it ain't gonna change your running back room. Oh, you fit the realness. Yeah, because think about it. He failed to realize that Tony Pollard got off because Ezekiel Elliott got off. Mm -hmm. They they like just like a one two. And when you look at the Lions right now, Montgomery gets off. Because Gibbs Jameer. gets off. Gibbs is, is, is Jameer gets off. Montgomery gets off. And you have to have the the two running backs. Mm -hmm. You got to have at least a good running back and a relief. Majority of teams have that now. You know what I mean? You you rarely find teams that just have a one workhorse bat. It may be only like only three because, running backs that are two workhorse that don't split carries anymore. And, and again, just go back and look at the Browns. Remember when they had Chubb and Kareem Hunt? It was a freaking nightmare for people. I got to keep – I hit one, he run me over. The new guy come in, he run me over. I don't, don't put nobody else in. Oh, we're going to put in a running back named James. He run me over. Like, come on. This is what happens. And so when you look at the Dallas Cowboys, I, I just tell their fan base, hey, keep keep the delusions because as long as your owner is in the way, while y'all trying to get the oil changed, he's trying to get other things done to the engine that's perfectly fine. Man. You see, you see, he he can have the perfect driver for the car, but nobody wants to deal with the guy who's taking all the best parts of the car out. Yep, trying to yeah. Nobody wants to drive his car. Like, just hire me. Let me drive. Nope. Let's get us to where we need to go. Nope. He got. He he got to somewhat. He got to help drive to help you get to the destination too. He just can't. Yep. Let, he just can't let you get the credit for being the driver. Nope. And that's why. That's why I always tell people, just ask yourself. Literally, just ask yourself. You know, what is that? What do you expect to come out of a situation? Where the owner is literally the problem, and as as a lion fan, I know all too well what that looks like. Mm. 